Next topic is epidemiology. So what is epidemiology? The epidemiology it is a study of how diseases and health condition it affects the different population. So it helps us to identify the pattern and the causes of disease as well as the risk factor that may contribute to their development. Who is the father of epidemiology? Well, it's John Snow who is widely considered to be father of epidemiology. In 1854, he investigated a cholera outbreak in the London and used a variety of method including mapping the case to identify the source of outbreak. So epidemiology it covers not only the study of disease, distribution and causation but also the health and the health related events occurring in the human population. So epidemiology it is a study of distribution and determinants of health and population health and diseases in the population so by studying the disease pattern and trend the epidemiologist it can help to identify the factors that contribute to development of the chronic disease like heart disease cancer and the diabetes so it is study of how disease and health condition affect the different population it helps to identify the pattern and cause of the disease as well as the risk factor that may contribute to their development now what are the uses of epidemiology epidemiology it has many uses in the field of public health and medicine the number one its application of the epidemiology is disease surveillance so it the epidemiologist they use surveillance system to monitor the occurrence of disease and health condition in the population so that can help to identify the outbreaks and trends in the disease occurrence which can be used to inform the public health interventions second identifying the risk factor the epidemiologist they help help to identify the risk factor that contribute to development of the disease and health condition so this information can be used to develop intervention and prevention measure to reduce the incidence and the prevalence of these condition third is the evaluating intervention the epidemiologist they use various study design to evaluate the effectiveness of the interventions like the vaccines drugs and public health policy so that helps to identify the effective intervention and improve the health practice so overall epidemiology it is a important tool for understanding the distribution and determinants for the to understand the distribution and the determinants of the health and diseases in the population and developing the strategy to improve the public health so the use of epidemiology is to monitor the disease find out why disease happen evaluate the treatments helps to create the health policies and to study the workplace health risks the epidemiology will not cover only the study of disease distribution and causation but also the health and the health related events occurring in the human population so this field helps to identify the risk factor for various disease evaluate the effectiveness of the treatment and the healthcare services what are the aim of epidemiology according to the international epidemiology association there are three three main aims are describing the distribution of diseases and health related condition in population it aims to describe the occurrence and distribution of diseases and health related condition in population so that includes the identify you have to identify the pattern of disease occurrence and how they vary by time place and person second identifying the determinants of health and diseases it aims to identify the factor that contributes to occurrence of disease and health related conditions like the genetic environment and the behavior factors third is the epidemiology aims to develop and evaluate the intervention such as vaccines drugs 
and public health policy to prevent and control the diseases and health related condition in the population so what are the tools of measurement in the epidemiology the most common used tools of measurement in the epidemiology are they are the rate ratio and the proportion first is the rate what is rate a rate will measure the occurrence of some particular events like the development of disease or the occurrence of death in population during a given period time so what does rate it is a type of ratio that compares the occurrence of event that is the numerator here over specific time period to the size of population that is at the risk during that time period that is the denominator so they are used to measure the frequency of disease in a population over the time it has a numerator and a denominator the numerator here will represents the number of cases of event of the interest and the denominator will represent the size of the population at risk of experiencing uh, the size of population at risk of experiencing the event during the specified time period so let us discuss example of a rate like a rate of caries could be example of the rate of caries that could be number of new cases of tooth decay that is the numerator here among the children age 5 to 10 years old uh, that is the denominator here in a particular uh, community period over a period of 1 year so let's say that during 1 year period there were 100 new cases of tooth decay in a children age 5 to 10 year old in a community and the total number of children in this age group was 1000 so the rate of caries in this community it can be calculated by uh, number of new cases divided by total population at the risk uh, multiply by time period so 100 are the new cases and 1000 is the total number of the children that are at risk so 100 divided by 1000 into into time period that is 1 year so the answer is point 1 now the different categories of rate are the crude rate specific rate and standardized rate let us understand what are that the crude rate these rates are the simplest type of the rate and it they will represent the total number of events like the birth death in a given population over a specific time period without taking into account any factors like age sex or other characters whereas the specific rate these are the uh, specific subgroups of the population like the age group or the geographic region so they are used for identifying the pattern and trend in the specific population and for comparing rate between the group so the specific rate are actually observed rates of diseases due to the specific cause or disease occurring in specific groups or diseases during specific time period whereas the crude rate they are the actual observed rate such as the birth and the death rate the standardized rate these rates are adjusted for the difference in age sex or other characteristic of the population being compared so they are obtained by either direct or indirect method of standardization or adjustment like age and sex standardized rate now what is the ratio so ratio they are the general term that can include proportion percentage etc so the ratio in the epidemiology can be defined as relation relationship between two quantities or measure of health or disease such as the ratio of number of people with the disease to the number of people without the disease so example of ratio in epidemiology is the ratio of people with the gingivitis to the people uh, if the ratio of the people with the gingivitis to the people without gingivitis in a population 
so this ratio it can be calculated by dividing the number of people with gingivitis by the number of people without gingivitis the resulting ratio would indicate the relative risk of gingivitis in the population the ratio of dentists to population in a state in india is 1 is to 10000 that means that for every 10000 people there is one dentist available other is the proportion rate proportion is a ratio that express the relation in magnitude or part of the whole here the numerator is always a part of denominator so the proportion it is a measure of fraction of population that has a certain disease at a given a point in a time so if 1000 people if the 1000 people they are tested for a disease and 100 of them are positive the proportion of the people with disease would be 0.1 or 10% so they can be used to compare the prevalence of disease in a different population so what are the basic measurement in ep epidemiology the most commonly measurement in epidemiology they are the measurement of the mortality and measure of the measurement of the morbidity mortality is the condition of being mortal or susceptible to death so what are the various measurement of the mortality they are the crude death rate what is crude death rate it is defined as number of the death per 1000 people in a population in a given year so it is considered as the simplest measure of measurement of mortality and it is given by the formula crude death rate is equal to number of death during the year in population divided by mid year population into 1000 the specific death rate measure that number of death among the people in category per 1000 people in that category in a given year so the crude death rate it is calculated by dividing the total number of death in a given population during specific period by the total population and then multiplying the result by a constant the specific death rate they are calculated for specific subgroups of the population such as particular age group or the gender specific death rate can be a cause or disease specific as in case of cancer mi or the road accident so the specific the specific death rate it can be expressed in formula like specific death rate due to the oral cancer is if it it is it is the number of death from the oral cancer during an year divided by mid year population into 1000 and the case fatality rate represent the killing power of the disease it is usually used in cases of acute infectious disease so the case fatality rate describe the proportion of the people who die from a specific disease among all individual who are diagnosed with the disease within a certain time period case fatality rate is total number of death due to the specific disease divided by total number of cases due to the same disease into 100 proportional mortality rate it is a measure that describe the proportion of death in a population that is attributed to a specific cause it is calculated by dividing the number of death from the specific cause by the total number of death in population and multiplying by 100 to get a percentage other is infant mortality rate the number of death among the infant under 1 year of age per 1000 live birth so what are the factors that are affecting the mortality rate age of the patient the mortality tends to increase with the age as the older patient are more likely to have chronic health diseases gender mortality rate can vary by gender with the male have higher mortality rate than the female a patient with a health status patient with chronic health condition or illness are likely to have more mortality rate lifestyle factors like smoking excessive alcohol consumption excessive alcohol consumption poor nutrition and lack of the physical activity they can increase the mortality rate 
सोशो इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस पीपल लिविंग इन पॉवर्टी और लो लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन हैव हाई मोर्टेलिटी रेट जोग्राफिकल लोकेशन मोर्टेलिटी कैन वेरी बाई रीजन और कंट्री ड्यू टू डिफरेंस इन द हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम इन्फेक्शियस डिजीज रेट्स एंड द इन्वायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स इंडिविजुअल विद लिमिटेड एसेस टू हेल्थ केयर में एक्सपीरियंस हाई मोर्टेलिटी रेट जेनेटिक फैक्टर्स कैन ऑल्सो इंक्रीज द द रिस्क फॉर मोर्टेलिटी फॉर सर्टन कंडीशन लाइक हेल्थ डिजीजेज कैंसर एंड इनहेरिटेड डिसऑर्डर्स नो वट इज इंसिडेंस इंसिडेंस रेफर्स टू नंबर ऑफ न्यू केसेज ऑफ ए पर्टिकुलर डिजीज और हेल्थ कंडीशन दैट अकर्स विद इन अ गिवन पॉपुलेशन ऑफ अ स्पेसिफिक पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो इट इज एक्सप्रेस्ड एज रेट और प्रपोशन सच एज द नंबर ऑफ न्यू केसेज पर थाउजेंड और न्यू नंबर ऑफ न्यू केसेज पर थाउजेंड पीपल पर ईयर सो इंसिडेंस इट इज अ वे टू मैयर हाउ मेनी न्यू केसेज ऑफ डिजीज हैपन इन अ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल ड्यूरिंग सर्टन अमाउंट वेयर एज प्रिवलेंस इट इज द टोटल नंबर ऑफ केसेज ऑफ पर्टिकुलर डिजीज दैट अकर्स विद इन अ गिवन पॉपुलेशन एट स्पेसिफिक पॉइंट इन अ टाइम सो इट इज इट इज एक्सप्रेस्ड एज प्रपोशन और परसेंटेज ऑफ पॉपुलेशन such as number of individual with a particular disease divided by total number of people in the population because what is the difference between the incidence and the prevalence the incidence refer to the number of new cases of a particular disease that occur within population over, over a specific period of time whereas prevalence it is the total number of cases that exist within population at a specific point in a time so incidence it is measured over a defined period of time such as a year while prevalence it is measured at a particular point in time so the denominator that is used in calculating incidence it is the population at risk of developing the disease during specific uh, during the specified time period while the denominator used in calculating prevalence it it is the total population that is at the specific point in time the incidence it will provide information about risk of developing a disease over a time while prevalence it will provide information about the overall burden of disease in a population so prevalence it can be affected by both incidence and duration of disease while the incidence it is not affected by duration of disease so in summary incidence measure number of new cases of disease that occur within a population over a time while the prevalence it measure the total number of cases of disease that exist within a population at a specific point in a time now there are three types of epidemiological studies or methods that we use number 1 is the descriptive epidemiology second is the analytical epidemiology and third is the experimental epidemiology the descriptive epidemiology it is the study of patterns and distribution of disease in particular population or the geographical area so the descriptive epidemiology it help us to understand how many people are affected by disease their characteristic and the how the disease is distributed in an area the data collected it is analyzed to identify the patterns and trend that can help the public health official to plan and implement effective intervention to prevent and control the spread of disease whereas the analytical epidemiology it is a branch of epidemiology that seeks to identify the cause and the risk factors of the disease by comparing group of people with and without the disease that involves the use of statistical methods to analyze data and test the hypothesis about the factors that contributes to occurrence of disease like the researchers will identify a group of people who have the disease so they are the known as cases and compare them with the people who don't have the disease they are known as the controls so those have the disease they are the case and those who don't have disease they are the control so what here the researcher will do it will identify group of people who have disease and compare them with group of people who don't have a disease 
so then they examine various factors like age gender lifestyle and environmental exposure to determine the which factors they are associated with the disease the results help us to identify the risk factors for a disease and the and this information can be used to prevent and control the disease the third is the experimental epidemiology so this is typically conducted through randomized control trials so where the participant they are assigned to where the participant they are assigned to either a treatment group that receives the factor being tested or a control group or a control group that does not receive the factor being tested so researcher will monitor both the groups to see if there is difference in health outcome between the two so let us discuss the various steps that are involved in the descriptive study number 1 is the defining the population to be studied this step involve identifying the group of individual or the cases that will be included in the study so the population it may be defined based on certain criteria like age gender location or other factors the second is the defining the disease under study so that involves clearly defining the disease or health condition that is being studied the third is the describing the disease in term of time place and person that involves collecting and analyzing the data on the distribution of disease in different population and setting so the time time will refer to the temporal pattern of disease occurrence place will refer to the geographical distribution and person refer to the demographic and other characteristic of individual for the time it can be measured in the terms of hour day week months years three times three types of time fluctuation or time trends that can be seen number one is the short term fluctuation these are the rapid and unpredictable changes in disease that may last for few days so the short term fluctuation will last for few days or weeks uh the periodic fluctuation that may uh, uh, follow a regular pattern over period of week months or years the third are the long term fluctuation so that may last for years or even decades so the time it is an important characteristic in the epidemiology and understanding the dynamic of disease occurrence over time it can over time can help to identify pattern and trends so you should know what is epidemic endemic or pandemic endemic means uh, a disease that is regularly present in the particular geographical area whereas the epidemic is the sudden increase in the incidence of particular disease beyond what is expected based on the past experience so the disease uh, the disease here may occur in the localized or it may spread to other regions or countries whereas the pandemic it refers to the global epidemic in which disease spreads rapidly across multiple regions or the countries affecting a larger number of people example is the covid 19 pandemic situation so the fourth point is the measuring meant of disease that involves uh appropriate measure to quantify the occurrence and severity of disease so that includes clinical measure laboratory test or any other tool for assessing the health outcome the fifth is comparing with the known indices and last is formulating a etiological hypothesis so based upon the descriptive data and analysis researches may develop hypotheses about the cause or the risk factor for the disease under study in the descriptive epidemiology the characteristic of person can be important factor in understanding the disease occurrence and distribution like age it is the most important ep- epidemiological variable relate that is related to exposure and pathogenesis of diseases uh, sex anatomical physiological psychological behavior difference between male and female 
can account for many sex specific diseases gender physiological behavior environmental and socio economical character it can also be important determinant of disease occurring in different ethnic groups fourth is the place of origin uh, environmental culture behavior and dietary factors they are related to place of origin so that can be important determinants of disease occurrence so let us discuss about dynamic of disease transmission that involves the pattern and mechanism by which infectious agent they are transmitted from one individual to other and how these patterns and mechanism can impact the spread of disease in the population so following are the some of the important factors that influence dynamic of disease transmission the infectious agent the characteristic of infectious agent like the virulence mode of transmission and the incubation pe period it can affect the dynamic of transmission the susceptibility of individual to infection immune response can impact the spread of disease environmental factors like temperature humidity population density they also influence the spread of disease example many respiratory virus they spread more easily in cold dry condition the mode of transmission like the direct contact airborne droplets or contaminated surfaces can impact the speed of transmission the mode of transmission either could be a direct transmission where infectious agent is transferred directly from infected person to uninfected person through physical contact example is sexual contact touching or kissing indirect transmission that uh, that occurs when an infectious agent is transferred from an infected person to uninfected person through uh, through intermediate object like air contaminated food or through contact with the door handles or other equipments droplet transmission when when the infected person coughs sneezes or talk the infectious agent they are expelled into air and they come in contact with another person mucous membrane so this type of transmission is limited to short distances typically within 1 meter of the infected person inoculation transmission uh, transmission when the infectious agent is introduced into body or through break in skin or the mucous membrane like the needle stick injuries or contact with the medical equipments now what is reservoir it is a source of infection where the infectious agent can persist and multiply from which the individual can become infected so there are many types of reservoir human reservoir they are the primary reservoir for the infectious disease that are transmitted from person to person like the respiratory infection in in some humans uh, animals can uh, humans can also serve a reservoir for the zoonotic diseases that are transmitted from animals to humans animal reservoir like uh, many infectious diseases are maintained in animal population and human can become infected through contact with infected animals like the rabies lyme virus etc environmental reservoir some infectious agent can survive in environment like soil water and can infect humans or animals that comes in contact with them example is tetanus non living reservoir include uh, agents that can persist in non living material like food water or fumats let us discuss what is cross sectional study the cross sectional study it is type of the observational study that involves the collecting data at a single point in a time in a time from a group of individual who shares a common characteristic like age gender or location so example of cross sectional study involves surveying a group of adults in a particular city to estimate the prevalence of smoking so the researcher they would collect data on whether e uh, whether each individual smokes or not along with the other relevant information such as age gender and occupation and the prevalence of smoking that could be calculated as number of individual who smoke divided by total number of individual surveyed 
so that is in other words the cross sectional study it provides a snapshot of prevalence of disease at specific point in time rather than following individual over time to measure the incidence that is why the cross sectional study is often referred as prevalence study other is the longitudinal study it is also known as incidence study as it involves the observation of group of individual over time to measure the incidence or occurrence of particular disease or health come or the health outcome so longitudinal study they are used for studying the natural history of the disease identifying the risk factors and evaluating the effectiveness of interventions so in the longitudinal study the data is collected from same individual over period of time often years or even decades so it is a powerful design that can help researcher to identify the pattern trends and changes in health outcome so the participant here are followed up at multiple time points with the data being collected at at each time point so the longitudinal studies can be either prospective where data is collected in real time as the study progress or retro or retrospective where the data it is collected from the past records other is the case control study so what is case control study case control study it is a observation study that is designed to compare the individual who have a particular condition or disease to the individual who doesn't have the condition or the disease so those who have disease are known as case and while those who don't have the condition or disease they are the controls so researcher here would identify a group of cases with the disease and group of controls without a disease then they look back in time to determine whether the cases and control differ in term of exposure to particular risk factor or the exposure so the case control studies they are useful for investigate investigating the rare disease as they allow the researcher to identify the risk factor or exposure that may be associated with the development of disease the case control study they are also known as retrospective studies because they involve looking at past exposure or characteristic or they are characteristic of individual who have developed a particular disease or condition that are the cases and comparing them to those who don't have disease that is they are the uh, controls other name is they are also referred as case referent studies because the controls they are selected on the base of being referents or the representative of the population from which the case arose other name is trohok that is a simply cohort that is spelled backward that refer to fact that the case control study they are designed to estimate the association between the exposure and the outcome by comparing the frequency of exposure between the cases and control similar to way that cohort study compares the incidence of outcome between exposed and unexposed group over time however the case control are distinct from the cohort studies in that they are not prospective and they do not follow individual over the time now let us discuss what are the sources of case and control in a case control study so case are typically identified from the hospitals clinics or disease register registries where they have been diagnosed uh, with the condition whereas the control on other hand should come from the same population that give rise to cases so there are various method of selecting the controls that includes random sampling from the general population or from the specific group such as the patient registry so the selection of case and control is unbiased they are matched on important demographic 
एंड क्लिनिकल करेक्टरिस्टिक्स टू मेंटेन टू मिनिमाइज द कन्फाउंडिंग सो वट इज मैचिंग एंड कन्फाउंडिंग मैचिंग इट इज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ सेलेक्टिंग कंट्रोल दैट आर सिमिलर टू केस इन द टर्म्स ऑफ सर्टन करेक्टरिस्टिक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ ए केस कंट्रोल इज इन्वेस्टिगेशन इफ if the case control study is investigating the association between smoking and the lung cancer it would be important to match the control to the case it would be important to match control to case based on factor that they have uh, that may confound the association like gender and other variables so, so the confounding can occur when when the association between exposure and outcome it is distorted by presence of another factor like uh, like if a study found a strong association between smoking and lung cancer but we uh, but did not account for the fact that smokers were more likely to work in job with high level of air pollution then the association between smoking and lung cancer that may be confounded by exposure to the air pollution so matching is one of the way to control for confounding in study but it is not always feasible or necessary other methods like statistical adjustment or stratification can be used to address the confound cohort study it is a observation study that follow a group of individual over a period of time typically years or decade to investigate the occurrence of particular health or outcome of the disease the study generally starts with a group of people who are free of disease at the beginning of study and the researcher will collect information on various risks risk factors or the exposure that may be associated with the disease so the cohort it is then followed over time with the periodic measurement of exposure to this factor or exposure being taken at the end of study period the researcher will compare the incidence of disease in which uh, who were exposed to risk factor or the or the exposure of interest with incidence of the disease in uh, in the end the researcher will compare the incidence of disease who have the disease and those who were not exposed so the cohort study they can be either prospective where the data it is collected from forward in time from the baseline or retrospective where data they are collected backward from the specific time from the specific point in time the cohort studies they are also known as forward studies because as it start with a group of people who are initially free of disease or outcome being studied and then follow them over time to observe the development of disease or the outcome so the main difference between the case control and cohort study is way the study participant is the way the study participant they are selected in the case control the participant they are selected on base of their disease status with the cases and controls being compared in term of their exposure to risk factor while in cohort the participant they are selected on their exposure to risk factor and their disease or outcome status that is then followed over time so the cohort studies they are generally considered to be more reliable in establishing the causality as they are less prone to bias so cohort studies they are less prone to bias in participant selection so what are the let us discuss the steps in conducting a case control study so first of all there is selection of the case and control cases they are selected who, uh, who have the disease and while the controls are selected who don't have the disease the selection and uh, the selection of case and control should be done in a such way that minimize the bias then matching is done matching is process of selecting controls who are similar to cases like in the terms of certain characteristic like the age sex race 
to reduce the potential for confounding factors then measurement of exposure exposure of interest is usually a risk factor or potential cause of disease uh, that is studied that the, this step involves the measurement of exposure uh, status of case and controls last is the, the final step is the analyzing the data and interpreting the finding and another term that is is what is odds ratio the odds ratio it can be used in cohort study it is more commonly in the case of case control study so what is this odds ratio so it is it is the purpose of odds ratio it is to estimate the strength of association between a exposure that is the risk factor and the outcome that is the disease or condition in a case control study so it compares the odds of exposure in case that is the individual with the disease or the condition to the odds of exposure of in control that is individual without the disease or the condition so an odd ratio of 1 that suggests that no association occurs between the exposure and the outcome the exposure is the risk factor and outcome is the disease when the odds ratio is greater than 1 that suggests a positive association and odds ratio less than 1 suggests a negative association so it is a way to estimate the relative risk of disease that is associated with particular exposure or the risk factor so the odds ratio is measure of the association between exposure and the outcome uh, the odds ratio it is calculated at odds of the exposure among the cases divided by odds of exposure among the controls other important term is confidence interval what is confidence interval it is a range of value that give us idea of how accurate our estimate of the population parameter like the mean or proportion is likely to be in other words it tell us how confidence we how confident we can be that the true value it falls within a certain range for example let's say we want to estimate the average height of all the people in the city we can take a sample of people measure of their heights and use that information to calculate and uh, to calculate an estimate of average height of the entire population but since we have only but since we only have a sample we can't be 100% sure that our estimate is exactly right so this is where a confidence level interval comes in it will provide a range of value that we can be reasonable sure that uh, sure contain the true average height of population so we might calculate a 95% confident confidence interval of 165 cm that means that we have 95% confident that the true average height of population it falls somewhere between these two values that is 165 cm to 175 cm so the wider the interval the less precise our estimate more the uh, but more confident we can be that it contains the true value so in a case control the odds ratio and its confidence interval they are calculated using Uh, statistical software like uh, stata or ses so the confidence interval will provide a estimate of pre precision of the odds ratio and it is used to de uh, determine whether the association is statistically uh, significant if the confidence interval does not include one then the association it is considered statistically significant 